Okay. Just keep the comments going. All right, here we go. So developer details, plans for the first office building and the 116 acre North line. A lot of people thought that this was kind of hung up. So the 116 acre mixed use development north of Austin, which is effectively been known as the North line is in Leander. Here's kind of an uh, idea of where it's at. So it's going to be this section just north of here away. There's really nothing there right now. What's great about this area is you have a lot of shopping right off Hero right here. Costco's in there, HEB, tons of good stuff through here. So a I've, lot of a lot of movement. I think so a lot of people are going to Leander. I've put a bunch of people in homes over there. And yeah. I think that what you have, so right now they're even working on the highway, which is kind of a weird setup. So that will help congestion a little bit. And then the way they're building it, it's like hospital, hospital, uh, shopping center, hospital, shopping center. So I think it's a great place for medical field type jobs and small business owners. And then everything else is houses. And so as they put North line and as they put uh, Leander Springs, whenever, if ever that happens, those will, it'll just be a hub uh, like they're trying to do with so many other cities in Austin. But right now it's, it's poised to be one of the fastest growing versions of that hub. I like the North line, you know, it just sucks. That it's going to not be ready for a little bit. Right. Cause they've started I mean, they this. Have buildings. They have they're, buildings. They're so there. yeah. So here's the, what the project's going to look like. So they actually have, so this is the, yeah, this is a better kind of indication of what you get. So you're going to get retail. There's going to be businesses in there. Like you said, there's hospitals going in there, office spots. They have these row houses that are going in. In fact, they actually have some already complete. I tried to look to see what the prices were, but they're opening up section two and three now. So it says multifamily. That's the rental residential, what it say. Just read this a minute ago. Townhome pre-sales. So the townhomes right now, they said they're going to section two and three or phase two and three for pre-sales. But on here, it did not give any prices, I do not think. So do you know prices on these, Ian? Uh, I don't. I'm going to assume uh, north of 700. Oh, for sure. For sure. I'm With sure. a three point something tax rate. Let's see. How big are these things going to be? Oh, it doesn't say first floor, second floor. Interesting. But also they're going to want you to call them, which is- Yeah, why not of gonna, course. Yeah. Of course. Do you, but do you, I uh, answer in the chat, I want to hear from you. Would you buy in a neighborhood like this? If you're moving to Texas, moving to Austin, would you buy in a neighborhood with row homes or do you want to buy a home where you have a yard? You tell me in the comments, is this, would something like this interest you? Because that's always my curiosity. I could see people from like, you know, the East Coast that move here and go, oh, this is what I've always known. But then, you know, you and I, during the pandemic, had a lot of people that did not want anything like we were coming from, right? They wanted to be in nicer areas. They wanted to be in larger homes, finally have yards for their dogs and kids. Yeah. So I think the, the question is, if you've been here and you've spent time in Mueller or the domain frequently, the question becomes, or even just downtown in almost any metropolitan, do you like that vibe? Yeah. And could you live there, right? Chicago, I, New York, San bro, Francisco. Bro, I bet LA, if the market was still on fire, you'd have, those would all be sold. If the market was still moving and people needed homes, like moving like it was. like it's Oh, yeah. Ir irregardless, yeah. Or regardless of uh, builder. Like I, I was like, who the heck is this builder? Yeah, Zach said that there's a lot of apartments up right now. So, I mean, look, that's, you know, what was, there was a stat I saw not so long ago. It was like 19,000 units were online to be built coming up in the next year. But Austin for housing, when it came to multifamily, I think they were trying to, by 2035, put 100,000 on the ground. So 19,000 is a big chunk by that by 2035. So we're still pretty far behind and where we actually really need to be for rentals, but for homes, I would rather, I would be rather be building neighborhoods with that were condoized communities. So what I mean is they have these communities and Ian, you know, what I'm talking about you drive in a community and it looks like 
regular houses. There's house, 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 yard. Everybody has their own yard, but they're the lots are a little bit smaller and they're condoized. So you actually don't own, like you don't get a survey for your property. Okay. Top mix, Ian, why is Leander overhyped? I want to hear from the people. Do, do you think Leander's overhyped? I think if you were to look at it right this second today, you heard a lot of buzz and hear a lot of buzz about Leander. And so people would just move there, yeah. right? But without understanding the the planning that's going into building out Leander, it's hard to see it on the ground right now. Leander is hyped. It's like a good movie that you know is coming out and you see the trailer, you get really excited for it. And then you go see the movie and everything that was in the trailer is what you see. Is what you see. You've already seen it all. Mm-hmm. But there's, there is so much more coming. You got to wait for uh, version two, uh, you know, the sequel and the third one. Yeah. Dude, Steven, I love when you're bedridden. I'm sorry you're bedridden, but man, I love it because you're just laying in the comments right now. Pun intended. Walkability. I do like <laughs> yeah. walkability. Uh, people accept the trade-off of density if the location has great walkability. You know, yard maintenance can sometimes have an appeal. I actually, I, I agree with this 100%. You know, my wife and I, when we first owned a home in Phoenix, it was great because it had a little tiny backyard, but they were literally row homes. It was great for a little bit. And then as we were starting to grow family and, you know, got married and stuff, like it became like... Oh, I want a little more space. So I, I definitely see, you're right. There is an appeal for that. Go ahead, Ian. I think being able to, to there's, there's something to paying for a convenience, but the question is, are you paying the same price for that, for that type of home versus having your own space, right? Um, I, I don't know that everybody goes deep with that math because it might seem like it's less at first glance, or it might even be the same, but where it really scares me or worries me sometimes is uh, if you look at those types of neighborhoods where they're the condo so- the condo style neighborhoods, you got to find out. And we've a couple of us have talked about this. Uh, you don't necessarily know if there needs to be repairs, uh, let's say on the street lamps or on the streets or on a lot of the other things that are owned by the entire neighborhood. It's a very different type of HOA structure. And it could cost it could end up costing more if anything goes wrong. And when I say if anything goes wrong, sure, we haven't had too many major issues, but we've seen a couple snowmageddons, right? We've seen that uh, tornado thing that had come through. So when those types of things happen is when the single family style condos get a little more worrisome to me. Thanks for watching this short of the Real Amigos podcast. For more live streams, hit here. For more clips, hit here. We'll catch you on the next one.